autonomic nervous system pharmacology to understand that is all about understanding pharmacology in any facet of life already on sunday we made some beginning i'll quickly have a recap of that and then we'll proceed what are the two important divisions of autonomic nervous system sympathetic and parasympathetic are the two forms of nervous system parasympathetic comes out through vagus oculomotor nerve all cranial nerves will bring the parasympathetic system out of the cranium you also have parasympathetic system coming out of our spinal cord in the sacral part sacral part of spinal cord hence it is called cranio sacral outflow is what need to be remembered whereas this sympathetic system comes from thoracic and lumbar area hence called thoraco lumbar outflow is the name given for the sympathetic nervous system then what is one more difference between the two if you take the ganglia which are formed by the parasympathetic versus sympathetic nervous system sympathetic ganglia are all very close to the spinal cord parasympathetic ganglia are more closer to the viscera like the heart hence preganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic are long and postganglionic are short whereas the sympathetic system may preganglionic are short and postganglionic are very long is what you need to basically remember there is another point we discussed there are type of receptors i am giving a recap already we have finished this part of discussion and uh, actually our people are in the formation of building the video library every day lecture once it is over it is pushed into the video library online students can go click and then can be able to review the videos topic wise they are organized it will take another 2 3 days before the website video library get organized so don't worry if you miss also you have teacher available 24x7 online as a library video right doctor parasympathetic ultimately when it innervates there should be some receptor on which it need to act there are two types of parasympathetic receptors nicotinic muscarinic everywhere in the body you have muscarinic except only two locations where are they autonomic ganglia and neuromuscular junction are the only two locations where you have nicotinic receptors that also we have clearly revised then doctor all the areas postganglionic fibers of the sympathetic system produce norepinephrine the only place where they produce acetylcholine is when sympathetic system supplies the sweat glands in the palms there is a place where postganglionic sympathetic fibers are not adrenergic but cholinergic only place otherwise everywhere else it is the norepinephrine which is being produced then how about parasympathetic parasympathetic anywhere postganglionic means acetylcholine only is produced this is what you need to remember now we were talking about the various neurotransmitters last time we already finished this <clears throat> how is acetylcholine the main neurotransmitter in the parasympathetic system how is it basically produced it is basically produced by the combination of choline and acetyl group for that you require acet choline acetyl transferase so choline comes into the neuron binds with the acetyl group acetylcholine is formed it is stored in a synaptic vesicle and that degranulates and releases the acetylcholine which binds with the postsynaptic receptor which is called acetylcholine receptor <coughs> when acetylcholine receptor is stimulated muscle will undergo contraction is what need to be remembered and we also have seen how botulinum toxin lead to muscle paralysis botulinum toxin what will it do you have some calcium channels 
in this synaptic cycle. When calcium makes a movement, then synaptic degranulation will occur. The cycle degranulation occur in the acetylcholine releases. Botulinum toxin prevents that acetylcholine release from the presynaptic vesicles and hence if acetylcholine is not there, muscle doesn't contract and we get muscle paralysis whenever botulinum toxin is there. Then we also discussed about norepinephrine and epinephrine. Norepinephrine, how it is formed? Pyrosine combined converts into dopa, dopa become dopamine, dopamine become norepinephrine, norepinephrine is stored in synaptic vesicles once more here also calcium channels will be there and the movement of the calcium in the synaptic vesicle causes the release of the norepinephrine which goes and binds with the postsynaptic receptors the postsynaptic receptors of the norepinephrine are which type alpha 1 type presynaptic area may you have similarly what uh, alpha 2 receptors ok doctor so how does the drugs like uh, bretelium guanitidine act like antihypertensives they decrease the release of the norepinephrine at the level of the synaptic vesicle so less amount of norepinephrine means less stimulation of alpha 1 receptors on Sunday we also discussed alpha 1 stimulation lead to vasoconstriction and lead to the hypertensive effect is what need to be remembered then we also have discussed about amphetamine cocaine how do they basically act now where shall we start doctor I think these are all the things we have finished in the last class on Sunday huh? now ok yes this is one important area we need to talk today as a continuation of our last time discussion. <clears throat> On every Sunday doctor, 9 to 11 is the mock test. <clears throat> For all the online students, there is a who are outside Andhra Pradesh, they have an all India postgraduate dental exam pattern of 200 MCQs. For the AP students, we have a 100 MCQ test, which is a subset of the 200 questions, which is given as a all India paper to the outside AP students. Outside AP students take uh, online test, test engine is there. And uh, AP students, if they come to center, they can take offline. If they sit in home, they can take online. So after 9 to 11, 11 to 130 will be the discussion on the 200 MCQs in which 100 are AP, 100 is what you take as a test paper, so you will get ranking, performance, everything, right. After 1.30 you will have lunch, 2 to 7.30 we will have every Sunday 5 hours of session, just like 3 hours on the remaining days, we will have 5 hours session that day, so that we will have consultants, for every consultant Sunday is a free time, so they can spend more time in teaching. So, we also included 5 hour session on Sunday. So, that is a plan doctor. Remaining all Monday to Saturday, we have 3 3 hours in the evening, 5 to 8 or 5 to 7 30. Okay? So, that is a plan. Now, doctor, how does sympathetic and parasympathetic basically differ from one another? Is an important question. <coughs> if you take I, whenever you are angry, what happens to your pupils? Granny mass pupils used to dilate whenever you do a naughty thing when you are a child because sympathetic system dilates pupils. Parasympathetic constricts the pupil, meiosis. Heart rate. When we see suddenly the professor in the morning show at the ticket counter, our heart rate increases, his heart rate also increases because he also bunked and came for a morning show. I still remember as a ninth class student bunking the school, jumping the wall and going to the theater and discovering our maths teacher also in the ticket queue who is also supposed to be there in the school. Uh, then okay, both heart rates are equalized. So acceleration of the heart rate, increased contractility, sympathetic system activity. Whereas slowing, whenever your parasympathetic stimulates, 
heart rate slows down heart is supplied by which part of the parasympathetic system your vagus is there no vagus will go forms a plexus cardiac plexus and supplies the parasympathetic fibers to the heart any vagus stimulation will lead to slowing of the heart so slowing of the heart decrease heart rate are the features of parasympathetic if you take your vessels blood vessels typically the skin blood vessels will undergo constriction skeletal mu muscle blood vessels will undergo dilatation whenever you are exercising why exercise stimulates your sympathetic release release sympathetic system will increase the blood flow to your muscle only when the blood flow to your muscle increases you can exercise better whereas to your skin whenever you do jogging what happens your skin looks cold why it looks cold because skin vessels undergo constriction with sympathetic stimulation muscle vessels will undergo dilatation with sympathetic stimulation is what you need to remember then coming to the glands salivary glands on stimulation what will happen they form sympathetic stimulation thick viscid secretions they will form whereas parasympathetic watery secretions will be there and if you look at the sweat glands typically the sweat glands sweat glands are all richly supplied by you in the palm everywhere by your sympathetic system that's the reason when your sympathetic organ activity you start sweating when you are afraid because sweat glands are supplied by sympathetic system but what is the neurotransmitter at the receptors of the sweat glands postganglionic sympathetic is not adrenaline but acetylcholine only place there is all other glands lacrimal glands salivary glands etc they start over secreting if the parasympathetic influence is there bronchial muscle a asthma patient why will you give epinephrine injection in acute asthma because epinephrine sympathetic system bronchodilator right whereas acetylcholine parasympathetic system is a bronchoconstrictor so what is the drug you give as a bronchodilator anticholinergic drug which is ipratropium bromide ipratropium is like atropin atropin is anticholinergic so you give ipratropium which is anticholinergic to dilate the bronchi because acetylcholine bronchoconstricts anticholinergic bronchodilates is what you need to remember then how about the smooth muscle of the git the muscle wall relaxes but muscle the git sphincters undergo contraction if you are having sympathetic stimulation right then as the muscle wall contracts and sphincters relax if the git muscle contracts and the sphincters relax what happens defecation occur so cholinergic system lead to defecation and sympathetic stimulation what will it do it will make the git become very loose loose and sphincters go constriction so people who are stressed out about their exams will end up in constipation prolonged mental stress with sympathetic hyperactivity right then bladder very important the bladder wall muscle is called detrusor parasympathetic contracts the detrusor whereas the sympathetic system relaxes right so parasympathetic contracts acetylcholine contracts the detrusor once more how will parasympathetic reach the bladder parasympathetic is craniosacral outflow so sacral fibers will come out parasympathetic form sacral plexus that supplies the motor supply to the detrusor and detrusor contracts sphincters relax urine comes out so parasympathetic stimulates the urine outflow and sympathetic retains the urine because it relaxes the bladder wall and constricts the sphincters similar to git now what is the important effect on yeah priya is saying the chart is not seen clearly don't worry we will give it in the notes uh, and it is available in every textbook no big deal but we will also give it as a pdf 
we will send to all our online students as a PDF. It becomes easy. Now, metabolism. If you are having sympathetic activity means your metabolic rate must increase, you should produce energy. Obviously, because sympathetic system is fight and flight system. When you are afraid, lion is coming on you, you have to run means sympathetic. Gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, they all become stimulated by sympathetic. Then renin production increases by sympathetic. And lipolysis, lipolysis stimulated by sympathetic. How will you remember? If you exercise, your sympathetic system works and your lipolysis is there, you become thin. I mean, that is not the way you become thin, but you can remember it easily. Sympathetic is lipolytic. Insulin is lipogenic. You see people who take insulin injection. Granny Ma takes insulin injection. If she takes insulin injection, she becomes fat. Those who are diabetic are very thin if they don't have insulin. Because insulin is lipogenic. No insulin is lipolytic state. And you will thin out. Suddenly people lose weight when they become 40. They think, oh, we are becoming smart. No, they became diabetic just recently. Okay? So, lipogenesis is a, the nature of insulin. Lipolysis is the feature of sympathetic system is what you need to basically remember doctor. <clears throat> Now, let's continue part two of the autonomic nervous system pharmacology.